brand strength, brand engagement, and cultural importance of brands has always been something that was very close to my heart. Thank you for joining me today. I'm, I'm fascinated actually about your job. <laughs> so you are Chief Marketing and Product Officer for Lego. But as, as I've kind of experienced now, every, every time I ask someone about their role, e each one at, at an organization is always different. So I'm interested about what, what does the Chief Product and Marketing Officer do? So with the Lego brand, there's so many different possibilities. And my team looks at how we build holistically all of the in enormously exciting experiences you will have with the Lego brand at the global level. So it covers all the product innovation. We have over 700 different products. All of the innovation thinking for the future when it comes to our product because the Lego system of play has so many different possibilities. So we also look at innovation that is further out. Um, brand, marketing, um, media, um, really thinking about the future of the marketing model. We have a lot of digital platforms, um, our own digital platforms. So my team also looks um, after all of our own digital platforms, all of our own and earned media. We have our own internal creative agency that also sits on my team. Um, we also have very strong relationships with partners. Um, so that also is managed by my team. And of course, also managing our content because we develop so much content um, from movies to TV series to some unscripted shows. So partnerships, content uh, creation is also part of, part of the organization. Um, those are the, the really kind of big important areas to mention. So uh, your work and career is being honored um, in the Adweek Brand Genius Lifetime Achievement Award, which is very impressive, congratulations. Um, Thank you. I, I would love to kind of maybe understand sort of the achievements you're most proud of. I certainly hope that um, part of it is about the fact that I've been managed to inspire and develop many people throughout my career. I worked with some brilliant people and brilliant teams, um, and I still feel that you know, leadership and development of people is one of the biggest jobs of a, of a marketer and a chief marketing officer. So definitely that's one of the things I feel very proud of when I see a lot of people I worked with rise up and achieve their, their own dreams and aspirations. Um, and then from a brand perspective, I'm super proud of the work that we've done at, at, at the Lego Group. I think for me, um, brand strength, brand engagement, brand relevance, um, cultural importance of brands has is, is, is always been something that was very close to my heart. And I, I feel very passionate and humbled and, and happy with how the Lego brand has managed to stay so relevant, so cool, so loved by people around the world. I really value creativity and the fact that I've managed to inspire uh, and continue to inspire many creative people that we have at the Lego Group to develop the kind of brand content that, that you see out there, um, the amazing products that we have, uh, and to continue to push the boundaries of creativity and innovation, learn uh, new things and be open to the world and the fact that I've sort of stayed on top of it continuously learning, like right now I'm learning a lot about um, the metaverse, digital technology, you know, wh where we're we going in the future, sustainability, all of these new topics that are coming on board. You know, I, I, th I think staying relevant and staying on top of things and, and staying connected to your audience, that's, that's something that for me is really important. And if you, could, if you could give one piece of advice to someone coming into the industry fresh, like what, what would that advice be? On top of staying relevant, because I think that's the important one. Um, Taking risks. I think a lot of people tend to maybe not always wanting to take risks. It's always very easy to convince yourself not to move, not to move jobs or not to move countries. But for me, what helped me the most in my career is being able to move across different industries, to be able to move across different countries and work with different people and, and jump into you know, situations that were not easy. But challenges is what makes us strong, and that's what helps us to have the best learnings in the world. So it, it seems like you are sort of, if you like, at, at the heart of creativity at Lego. Um, but I'm always interested about when creativity meets kind of the logical world of business. Like, how do, how do you kind of have the two coexist? For me, it's always art and science coming together and being very fluid. And the one thing that 
um, I don't really separate is, you know, I don't look at them as a trade-off, creativity versus commercial. Creativity delivers commercial results. And strong commercial results allow us to have the investment in creativity. So we see it as a very symbiotic relationship. And it's really interesting to speak, for example, with our designers that design our products or marketers or you know, content creators because um, they understand the impact that what, of what they do on the commercial side. And I can give you just a few examples of where you know, and I know marketing effectiveness is something that probably a lot of people are talking about. Just to give you a few examples of where creativity can lead to tremendous commercial impact. So for example, Lego Masters. Lego Masters, you know, it's a non-scripted show about, I don't know whether you've seen it, but it's very popular in the US. Have, it's one yes. of the most watched unscripted shows, I think number one for families, same in the UK. And we are now in more, probably around 14 markets around the world. And it has been really massive success. That's a very interesting creative concept. That's an idea of an unscripted show where people compete with their Lego creations. But that actually helped us to recruit and reinvigorate the love for the Lego brand in so many markets among so many consumers that actually we see the commercial impact also when a show like that comes out in the market. Or um, is, you know, when it comes to our marketing campaigns, so... Um, in 2018, we launched the first sort of what we call super ultimate Technic car, which was Technic Bugatti. It's a beautiful Bugatti. It's about this size. Um, but the essence of the marketing campaign was we built a life-size Bugatti just out of the Technic elements. Oh, wow. Everything. <laughs> wow. Including all of the Technic engines, um, like little motors. And this Bugatti was driven by the first ever Bugatti race driver, and it drove at 11 kilometers an hour. That was the biggest marketing campaign we've done for, you know, in, in, for Technic. Uh, it created so much impact, just that one big stunt. Yeah. Um, so, that's a, it, it, this is, so there's a way of thinking about creativity that delivers really strong commercial impact. And as I said, commercial, when you have strong commercial results, you, you can invest more in creativity. Yeah. And that means that you can also create a culture that is, you know, in conducive to taking risks, trying things that might not always work, yes. you know, doing things that you have not done before um, and instilling a, a level of bravery and also sort of like what, what I sort of say, keeping the ceiling high and the, uh -huh. the walls wide uh -huh. to make sure that, uh, that, that, you know, people can actually come up with different interesting ideas and try them out. So I... I, I you're talking, you know, but I love to hear that and, and, and the idea of kind of creating a an environment for people to take risks, I, I think it's hugely important. So when, when you think about, I guess, the people on your team, like, who are they? What kind of people are you like, looking to bring on board? I love the idea of diversity and inclusivity. So I, and, and diversity comes in different ways. Of course, there's functional experience. So I have some people who are coming from deeply technical engineering background. I have people who come from literary background. I have people who come from creative background, um, you know, having led agencies, et cetera. And I have people with very strong marketing expertise. Cultural diversity, also very important. Um, cognitive diversity, I always look at, look at. So, and on top of it, of course, gender, race, things like that, because ethnicity, culture, that's also very important because diversity is such an important topic and having a diverse team helps to, you know, achieve a lot of yes. that. I, I also want to sort of maybe double down a little bit on cognitive diversity because we don't talk a lot about that, but that's about the fact that people think differently. You know, mm -hmm. some people are very logical, like yes. you said, some people come at things much more from an intuitive uh, perspective. Understanding each other, I, I believe in this idea of one team. I think we kind of work together very much as one team in my leadership team and in my organization. And being able to take, make the best out of what each of us brings versus trying to kind of mold us ourselves, um, um, you know, to, to fit each other. But it's a very diverse organization. We, you know, we represent in general amongst everybody I have on the team. Um, we represent um, many different nationalities. So I love the idea of a team that, that that sort of represents kind of all types of people. Does that 
does that reflect in the marketing that that comes out of the team and, and the activation? Yeah, that, that's that's a really that's a really big aspect of it because you know we our aim is to inspire and develop the builders of tomorrow, and the builders of tomorrow are not architects. The builders of tomorrow are children. Yes. And you know, all children, and we want to touch all children around the world, and that's why it's so important that culturally we're also relevant and we understand the dynamics of different cultures, what's important to them, what they celebrate, you know, what are their traditions. You use the the R word relevant. Um, I, I always think that, that Lego as a as a brand has has managed to remain kind of culturally relevant. I think from from the outside, you might sometimes you might maybe think it's by accident, but it, it, I'm, I'm guessing talking to you, it, it's very deliberate how it, it remains. But what, what do you do and how do you instill kind of this, this desire in your team to keep the brand relevant? Um, it is not by accident, <laughs> not at all. Um, yeah, there's, we, we put a lot of emphasis on putting the children and our consumers in the center. So, you know, the, our conversations always start with what are kids into? Yeah. You know, what, what, what are they into? How do they spend their time? And we, we spend the time understanding that. What's important for families? What's important for culture? What are the big cultural moments? Because we see our, ourselves as a brand that um, is not only shaping the, the, and has a massive role to play in shaping the development of kids and what their childhood is all about, but we're also a brand that is a canvas for creative expression and for cultural interpretation. And that's why we also work um, and, and open ourselves to also be very culturally relevant, allowing artists and creators to um, to express themselves through the Lego brick because it's such an amazing creative canvas. Um, you know, I, I, you know, we work with very creative black um, artists in Canada who uses only black Lego bricks to celebrate the black brilliance, which we think is super cool. Um, but similarly, we will also work with, you know, a brand like Louis Vuitton to yeah. do, you know, holiday windows to celebrate the 150th birthday of Louis Vuitton. So it's things like that that keep us on our toes, but also allow us to actually tap into things that are relevant and important for different people, for different, um, you know, societies, for different social communities, different fandoms. Yes. Um, things like that. Oh, it's, it's, um, I, it, it's very refreshing. I, 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 um, I was thinking it's important that, that brands understand that they're not the center of consumers universe and there are other things that, that occupy their minds so it seems that lego is able to attach itself authentically to those things in culture too. yeah we always say that um you know our mantra uh, in the team uh, and in the organization um we don't talk we do yeah. so we don't that sort of want, we don't want to just attach ourselves um to um any kind of cultural idea or uh, important movement um, or important message, like many brands tend to have the impetus to jump on a bandwagon and say something about it on their Instagram or you know somewhere else. Earlier, you, you talked in a, innovation, um, and I always think innovation is obviously requires you to kind of look forward in terms of what what what's coming next. So if you're looking ahead and maybe we're at Cannes in 2033, what, what do you sort of see as kind of will be big things that we'll be talking about? Well, 2033 is 10 years away. <laughs> um, I, I'll, I'll say a few things yeah. that I, I hope for, but also some of the things that are maybe a little bit closer in, yeah. but still not tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and in Cam, you know, people are quite impatient. They move on very quickly. Oh, yes. Before they've even done anything about it, they're on to the next topic. But we're here this year because tomorrow I'm also speaking to Pelé with, um, um, about a very important partnership that we believe is going to pave innovation for the future. And it's our partnership with Epic Games. So last year, a lot of people talked about the metaverse. That was the big thing. Yeah. And this year, it's AI. It's generative AI. We've yeah. already moved on. Exactly. But the metaverse is being developed. Whatever is going to happen, all of the different technologies and capabilities will manifest themselves in a completely different way that people will engage in the digital world. The capabilities that, that will give us give give people that and and brands, and we are here to talk about the, that future, which I believe will have um, a very important role to play in how children develop, which is why we really want to be involved in it. How people engage with brands, how we build brands, how we market. And how we create relationships that are, you know, direct with our consumers and personal. 
And that's one thing that I think is going to be an evolution um, of the future where all of these digital capabilities will manifest themselves in some kind of a metaverse or let's say internet 3.0 that will provide um, a very different way um, for people to engage. It's not gonna be just about gaming. It is gonna be very much about creativity, but it also is going to be about um, much more immersive and broad range of experiences. I think it's gonna give us um, a very unique opportunity to connect the digital and the physical world in a much more seamless way. And when it comes to the Lego brick, I can be personal then to what I think is gonna happen for us. You know, I think that's gonna give us a tremendous opportunity. So I think that's one area that's definitely going to evolve. Some of the things that we are talking about that I hope will be resolved or, you know, at least achieved, sustainability goals. I certainly, right now, a lot of companies are working hard and making progress but also setting their goals to 2030 or 2032 or 2033. I, I truly hope that these goals are achieved. Yes, I share your, your hopes and optimism. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.